Hello stream makers! Less than one year after the release of the Atom Mini Pro, here comes the Atom Mini Extreme. Now, I don't like making videos about incremental updates, and at first I thought it was just an Atom Mini with more inputs and buttons. But then I took a closer look and I realized that we really have a big game changer in the live streaming game, and it's quite a big update. Having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inputs uh, doesn't mean it's only designed for people who use 8 cameras. Um, actually, you might want to consider it even if you are only connecting 1 or 2 cameras or none, and I'll show you why. Um, for me, the key new feature are the improved layout possibilities. Uh, you can really up your streaming game now, and I'll show you my favorite workflow and how I set up these interactive layouts. If you are new to the Atom Mini series and are just diving in, I recommend you check out my 50 minutes long tutorial on the Atom Mini Pro first, because I won't cover these aspects again in this video. Uh, today we are going to go through a quick overview of the new features of the Extreme, an in-depth look at the Super Source mode, explain what the upstream and downstream keys actually are with simple words if you never quite understood, and finally I'll show you my my favorite workflow for dealing with motion graphics and lower thirds. Uh, we'll ultimately finish with a recap of the upsides and downsides of this new Ata Mini Extreme. Now let's get started and start with a quick overview of the new features. In terms of design, we can definitely see a clear coherence in the product line. The Atom Mini Extreme design is very similar to the existing Atom Mini models. They share the same Atom software for computer control, and all the features that you could find in the Atom Mini Pro can be found in the Atom Mini Extreme, such as streaming to live platforms directly from the switcher. Now, the Atom Mini Extreme is heavier, longer, and you can connect up to 8 HDMI inputs instead of 4. Uh, there is now a headphone jack and a second USB connection, which means that you can now record to disk and use the Atom USB output as a webcam simultaneously. There is also a second HDMI output, which means you can bring up the multi-view in one monitor and the final program output on a second monitor or in a high quality ProRes recorder, for instance. It's worth noting that you can assign both outputs to any of the inputs in just two clicks in the Atom software. And this can be highly valuable in many situations. For instance, if you have a customer that wants to bring up just a PowerPoint on a stage monitor instead of the complete program output, Output, or you just have to go to Output 2, select your PowerPoint source, and there you go. The first input can be directly controlled using uh, the switcher. At the back there I have uh, the multi-view, but if I click on PGM here, you can see that it just switches uh, the, the output to whatever uh, input I choose here. Finally, it's worth noting that the multi-view is now entirely configurable, so you can set which source you want to see in which position, including the preview and the program windows. Uh, you can also easily switch from a full box to a full screen box if you don't need the preview window, for instance. So that's another very valuable addition to me. What initially struck me when I saw the design was the enormous amount of buttons. Uh, there are exactly 201 buttons, which is 4 times less than the 756 buttons of the ATEM Advanced Panel 4ME, but almost twice as much as the 104 buttons of a full computer keyboard. Even though I found it disturbing at first, I think the general idea is to make the ATEM Mini Extreme usable on its own without any laptop. And looking at it, there are many button sections that are just uh, eight copies of the eight camera inputs, which actually helps not making mistakes because that way you know which dangerous buttons control the camera that is currently on air. Here you can see that it's camera two on air, so all the buttons that are above, uh, well, I have to think carefully before touching any of these. We can find all the sets of buttons which were already there in the Atom Mini Pro. 
Uh, but with the Atom Mini Extreme, we now have headphones volume control buttons, uh, more transition types. There are also shortcuts for recalling macro number one to six of the Atom. There is also a select bus here to quickly set which video source uh, you would like to be in which uh, key. And I'll come back to these in a moment. Finally, there are new buttons for quickly adjusting Blackmagic camera settings such as ISO, focus, shutter, and black level control also called a pedestal. I would have preferred an iris control button instead of a shutter button because I generally adjust iris uh, much more than I adjust the shutter. If you want to go a step further on camera control, there's this free software we built that allows you to use any external joystick to control, for instance, the iris, the pedestal, the zoom, the focus, etc. You just have to run it on a laptop, connect your laptop to your switcher router, set your Atom Mini Extreme IP address, and then you can custom map any joystick access and buttons to camera settings. We will also soon release a hardware device that can connect to the DJI Ronin S2 so that you can use it as a PDZ head with the Atom Mini Extreme. With the joystick, you can control the pan and tilt precisely and also save position presets. And this way you can save a very specific position with a custom uh, zoom focus iris shutter white balance setting. And then you can recall it later with our software or using companion with a stream deck. Also, if you want to use your camera with a wireless video transmitter such as Teradek or Holyland, you can also send camera and gimbal control information wirelessly as well with our device. I've put a link in the description if you're interested. Uh, keep an eye on the Middle Things website, it's gonna come out soon. Anyways, um, that's it for my self-promotion. I now move to the most interesting new feature of the Atom Mini Extreme, which for me is the super Source. The Atom Mini Extreme comes with a super source. Uh, you can see this as a ninth virtual input into which you can put multiple video sources side by side. So for me, it's a huge addition and it's a surprise because uh, that was until now only available in the most expensive Blackmagic Atom switchers. Uh, so let me show you how it works. Okay, so first um, you can see my program monitor at the back there. So uh, I can I control it uh, this way on the Atom Mini. So I will start by bringing up the super source on that program monitor by pressing this button here, this new button on the Atom Mini Extreme. Then in the Atom software, um, I will just go into the palette here and then I'm going to select super source and then choose one of the presets here. So like, if I press the four here, there you can see that it pops up on the monitor, on the program. We now have uh, four videos side by side in the program output. You can have a total of up to four boxes in a virtual uh, input. So each box can be individually uh, configured. For instance, here at box one, uh, I can move uh, the position around. I can move, of course, the size. Um, I can change the source that will go into this box here. So I can choose whichever camera I want. I can crop it, of course. Um, and then here I have different um, automatic layouts. Um, I can also go into the Alt tab here and select a background, for instance. Here, if I want, um, I can put like, if I take camera five, uh, it makes a nice background. So it's an HDMI source, but I could also put like a still image of a media player as a background, um, for instance. And I can also put it on the foreground. Uh, for instance, if I select camera seven and I have a key for this one, which is camera eight, and you can see that on the foreground, I have a, a video with uh, with Alpha, which allows me to do uh, quite a few uh, few things with that. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then back on the Atom Extreme, as you can see, I can use the Super Source just as I would use any of the cameras here. So I can just select Super Source and I'll just have them side by side. So that's a very nice addition. In other Atoms that have Super Source, we can add a border. For some reason here for the Atom Mini Extreme, we cannot add any border. Uh, so I, I don't know why uh, it's this way. Maybe it's a hardware limitation. Now, I find it quite intuitive to set it up in the Atom software, but it's not very easy to change the super source very fast in the live streaming uh, if you have different layouts that uh, have to change very quickly. Uh, so I found three ways to improve the workflow. 
Um, the first one is to record macros in the Atom software. Now, if you're new to this, a macro is a sequence of Atom actions uh, that you can record in Atom software. So when you go to the Atom software in the macro section and press record, it will remember every single click or action you make on Atom Mini Extreme. And once you're done, you can play back the recording later. Well, instead of wasting time setting the proper parameters for each time you have to set it up to bring it up, uh, you can just record the exact sequence of actions required to bring up the shots and then play it back instantly by recalling the corresponding macro. Macros were already there in the other Atom Minis, but now you have hardware button shortcuts here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, right on the panel, which can be very practical. Uh, this way you can recall six different layouts straight from your Atom Mini. So it's a great way to prepare your shoots by making pretty fine layouts that you can call anytime during the stream. Also, you can easily export and import macros to other Atom Mini Extremes right from the Atom software. Now, a more simple way to create your macros is to use the H2R Super Source Layout software from John Barker from the Here to Record channel. Uh, it's a tool that allows you to set up your macros using a visual interface, just like PowerPoint or Photoshop, and it will export the corresponding macro code for you. Um, while it's only the beginning, I think it's a very, very promising tool because it really allows you to empower the Atom Mini Extreme with the ease of use that you get with softwares like OBS, vMix, or Wirecast. So thumbs up for this impressive piece of work. Finally, I would also like to credit Brian from A to Z Productions for the awesome macros he created that I now use on a regular basis. Uh, instead of making static macros like I explained earlier, he created fully animated macros that will smoothly transition from one super source to another. And if you have a stream deck lying around, you can use the popular companion software to import his custom buttons layouts, which will trigger the right macros depending on your or current layout. So as you can see, when I select one of his Super Source layouts on the Stream Deck using Companion, uh, the animated macro runs and you can see the smooth transition from one layout to another. So that's awesome. Uh, and it's designed so that you cannot mess everything up. Um, and with another page, you can select which HDMI input goes into which Super Source box and I also have all my macros here just in case I need to use the other macros of the Atom Mini Extreme. So this way you can just create super source layouts on the fly very easily in just a few seconds. Uh, and I can tell you that this is highly valuable when you have to show one or more speakers, a PowerPoint and a Zoom remote guest side by side. So big thanks to A to Z production as well. Now let's move on to our next part, which will cover all you have to know about upstream keys and downstream keys. When it comes to overlays and keying, I do feel that words like downstream keys, upstream keys, DVE, etc. are very tricky to understand, uh, especially if you come from a computer software like uh, OBS or vMix. Um, and I didn't really make it very clear in my Atom Mini Pro review. So um, just to make things clear, a downstream key or DSK is a layer that will go on top of everything. So you might want to use it for a fixed logo in the upper right corner, for instance. That layer's resolution should match your item resolution. So if you want to put a logo, you have to import a TIFF file with alpha, which is 1080p, uh, placing the small logo in the upper right corner. What I usually do is export the layers directly from Photoshop to the Atom Media Pro using the Blackmagic plugin so that I can make quick adjustments on the fly. An upstream key or USK is a layer that you can add in between the clean feed and the downstream key. It can be any of the Atom inputs, um, and you can make four types of modifications on that input. You can make a Luma key, which means you can key out part of the fill source uh, that has a specific luminance value or using an external key layer. You can also crop the results using a mask and move the result around by activating uh, what we call a flying key. The second modification you can make is a chroma key. So you can key out part of the fill source that has a specific chroma value. Uh, for instance, if you have a green screen shot, you can pick the green color to key it out and make adjustments to that shot. 
Just as the previous Luma key, you can also activate the flying key options to resize and move on that shot around. The third type of modification is a pattern key, so you can key out part of the fill source with a pattern. And now the fourth type of modification you can make to um, the input is a DVE. A DVE stands for digital video effect, and you can resize and crop the fill source as well as add a border and a shadow. Um, a DVE can be very useful with zoom and team scores uh, when you need to crop part of the screen and then make it bigger, things like this. So in a nutshell, you just have to remember that um, the downstream key or the DSK is the top of the top overlay, like a logo, uh, for instance. Uh, so think DSK equals logo. On the Atom Mini Extreme, you can make two independent uh, downstream keys. The upstream key, or USK, is a modification of one of the inputs. Um, on the Atom Mini Extreme, you can make up to four independent uh, upstream keys, which is pretty big for a small switcher. Now, I never really quite understood why they are named this way. Um, I find it quite confusing, actually, because, um, you know, the upstream key should be the, the top one. And up should be down and down should be up. Or well, if someone can explain me this stuff. Just as many other items, you can adjust the DSK and USK settings into the item software. But what's new on the extreme is that you can quickly select which inputs should be used as a fill source for each of uh, the keyers with the select bus buttons. For instance, let's say I want to use the upstream key one to key out the camera for green screen. So I first bring up the key using the key one on button here. There we go. I then select K1 chroma to tell it to make a chroma key on upstream key one. And then I just have to select the green screen shot, which is camera four. There we go. Uh, just to set it as the fill source. You can also customize the four transitions with uh, the fill source that will be used for that transition. If I make a wipe transition and I select the same media player one, uh, you can see that when I make the transition, it will use the media player. If I want to set the logo of media player one and the downstream key one, I first bring up the key using the DSK1 button here. Then I select media player one, I press DSK1 on air here, and you can see the logo pops up. Let's say we want to make a nice layout of a Zoom call, for instance. So I'm going to start by bringing up the background in the program window here. Um, so here I have a video loop of a background coming into HDMI 5. So I select it. Then I will go to um, the DVE one. So we want to be able to uh, resize, crop, etc. So I will bring up the select bus for DVE one um, and we can toggle the, the upstream key one on air here using this button on. But I could also go into the Atom software here. here. I press on air to have it in the program. So as you can see, I now have uh, my upstream key. Um, and of course, I can change the source here using the select bus there. So I can put any camera I want here. There's a small border that we can adjust here in the upstream key one settings in the Atom software. So as you can see, when we go to DVE here, we have a few settings like the border. Uh, we can put a small shadow like this and we can actually uh, crop the image using a mask and stuff like this. So we have a nice, a nice layout here. So if I can quickly, no layout, layout, no layout, layout, etc. So I'm just doing like background key, key off camera. So background key, key off camera. Now, if you're in the middle of a live stream, you'll probably be in a hurry. So you might want to prepare everything beforehand uh, to have all of your layouts ready. So instead of pressing all these keys at the same time, of course, I can use macros. So that here you see, I can select my camera there. And then when I press macro number six here, I have my uh, layout, which goes on automatically. So uh, I can just turn it off by selecting another source and then macro. It just plays back the whole set of actions that I've recorded into the super source settings um, instantly. So you can either use these six buttons here or uh, do a more advanced setup with a stream deck and companions uh, with all your macros uh, as I showed earlier. In 
this section, I would like to show you three different workflows for lower thirds, a simple one, a better one, and lastly, my go-to technique. The most simple workflow I would suggest is using the Atom Media Pool. So you can make 20 different lower third stills before the show uh, that you save as a TIFF file with alpha using Photoshop, and then you bring them up with a downstream key and a simple fade by pressing the auto button. So for instance, we can put that lower third into a downstream key. So in the select bus, I just select a downstream key one. I select media player one where I have my lower third and then to bring it on air, I press the downstream key one button and here we go, it's on air. So of course, if I use uh, the Adam software, I can add a very small fade um, to make it like smoother like this. So uh, too bad the fade button isn't on uh, the Atom Mini itself. Each time you change speaker, you have to load uh, the next file from the Atom Media Pool to the media player like so. Um, I find it a bit more convenient to um, send the lower thirds directly from Photoshop because this way you can live edit names and job titles easily on the fly if there are last minute changes, etc. Uh, because customers often change their minds at the last minute. If you want to add a bit of movement in your lower thirds, I recommend creating a PowerPoint presentation that has all your lower thirds video with a green screen background. So here, I think it's on camera, yeah, camera four here. Uh, so I have a PowerPoint and then when I move the slides, I just have full screen videos with a green background and then it's very easy to key. If I want to have it over my video here, so I press input number two to show up my video, then I press the upstream key one chroma here. I'm going to select, uh, so it was camera four, and then I just press the key one on air button and here we go. We have all the um, lower thirds here and I'm just like going back and forth into with my PowerPoint here. So if I wanna bring up a lower third, I just press next in the PowerPoint and it will play it out for me. Now I use PowerPoint for convenience, but you can use uh, any player you like. The only limitation with that PowerPoint method is that you might struggle with that lower thirds that have transparency uh, due to the green screen keying and uh, you know that spill, etc. So now my go-to workflow is to use a software called ProPresenter, which is kind of a PowerPoint, but optimized for live productions. Uh, what I like about it is that you can add videos and and lower thirds in a ProRes 4444 format with alpha. And then when you play back the file, it can send uh, two separate key and fill signals to uh, the Atom Mini Extreme. If you use uh, like a Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini HD or you know those deckling cards that you put at the back of computers, and in the case of the Ultra Studio HD Mini, for instance, uh, you just have a Thunderbolt 3 cables that goes from the Mac to the unit, and then two SDI cables, one with the key, one with the fill, so it uses two inputs on your uh, Atom Mini Extreme. But then when you create a downstream key or an upstream key, you can specify which input is the fill and which input is the key. And then you will have a perfectly clean lower third motion graphic. Um, of course, you can also use it to play back full screen videos as well. Another cool feature is that you can create a separate stage output using your computer HDMI out, for instance, where you can display a big video countdown timer, which lets the speakers on the stage and in the backstage know when the current video that's playing is about to end so that they can prepare and know when they have to talk again. You can also use ProPresenter to play back music files before the show starts, or even create a video countdown at the beginning of the show to let your audience know when it's going to start. And if you unfortunately uh, experience technical issues, you can easily add a few minutes here and there to that countdown timer. Uh, here I made all of these animations using an After Effects template I've purchased, so I've put a link in the description for you. So that's it for my lower thirds uh, workflow. So these three workflows can be used with any Atom Mini, but the last Pro Presenter workflow uses two HDMI inputs for the key and fill signals. So I think the Atom Mini Extreme is much more suitable for this workflow. A 
a bit earlier in the video, I talked about how you can create macros in the Atom to improve your workflow. Um, I've also showed you how you can export both the key and fill signal for motion graphics with Pro Presenter slides. Well, now, what about controlling all of these worlds together from one location? What about having one small controller sitting next to your Atom Mini Extreme on which you can show only the buttons you are interested in? Um, it could do things like trigger a lower third motion graphics for speaker number five, trigger your super source layouts, uh, change your super source inputs within seconds, make the DJI run in S2 jump to a specific position and trigger a super source with this framing. Well, the magic is created using this incredible tool called the Stream Deck, which is a button pad with customizable LED displays on each button so that you can name each of the buttons as you like. So it comes with its own software, but things get even more exciting when you use it with a free software called a BitFocus Companion. In BitFocus Companion, you first add your devices, such as one or more items, Pro Presenter. Then you can map each button to a sequence of actions. For instance, here I'll create a button, tell the atom to run macro number two, which creates a nice super source. And I'll also tell it to run Pro Presenter slide number three, which is a video that has alpha. Then I'll ask him to put the atom DSK1 on air. And then boom, uh, when I press the button, it will trigger all of these things for me. So as you can see here, I have all, all of my layouts here. With a single button, I am able to combine uh, a super source macro that I did in the Atom that puts two videos side by side. And I also trigger a video from Pro Presenter that comes on top of that super source. So, um, here you can see I have uh, at the background is like the super source of the Atom. And then I add this uh, uh, video with transparency using the separate key and fill uh, from the Pro Presenter software. So I can make uh, nice transitions this way uh, and I can make, uh, you know, different types of, uh, of layouts uh, that are pretty, pretty nice uh, to the eye. Um, and yeah, so we can make that quite interactive. So here, just to show you in BitFocus Companion how it works, if I want to create, for instance, a button here uh, that will uh, trigger a lower third. So I just go into the BitFocus Companion interface. I set button type, I create a regular button. Uh, so this will be lower third. I can put like, let's say a blue color, like a blue color here. Uh, then on the key down, I will tell a pro presenter so pro presenter to go to a specific slide. And here um, I'm going to put the slide number. So if I go to pro presenter, you see this lower third here is on slide number eight. So I tell it to play slide number um, eight here and the presentation path is uh, zero, zero. Now, as soon as we launch this video in Pro Presenter, we are going to tell a uh, companion to tell the Atom to activate the downstream key one. So uh, here we are going to set um, down to select downstream key, set downstream key on air, um, and we're going to select downstream key one. Now you can see that the new button here pops up on the Stream Deck instantly. And then uh, when I select that button here, you will see the lower thirds that come uh, on top of my video. So it's actually playing the file from Pro Presenter with the alpha, etc., And it's also activating um, a, downstream, a downstream keyer one and putting that file uh, into the downstream keyer. So right now we only made one, but of course we could have many, many lower thirds here. And then, you know, you just send them all right from one stream deck. So that's really, really valuable. Unfortunately, I did not manage to grab an Atom Mini Extreme ISO version in time for this review. So I cannot tell you whether it works as promised or not, but I can tell you that the extra feature you will get with the ISO is that you can record all of the inputs in one hard drive in good quality H.264, and it will generate a DaVinci Resolve project file for you with all the cuts so that you can, you know, fine tune your uh, live edits afterwards. 
Uh, if you have Blackmagic Pocket cameras, it will also trigger Blackmagic Raw recordings into the cameras so that you can have a very high quality edit at the end. So I'm honestly very impressed by all the important features Blackmagic managed to pack in such a small form factor. Um, I don't see any no-go or big issue for me. Uh, it really addresses many of the Atom Mini Pro limitations. It's really an incredible switcher. Um, now, as amazing as this device is, I think there is still room for improvement. Of course, this is only from my perspective, so I might be the only one to think that, but the button layout could have been a bit better, I think. Since we need the Atom software to adjust the settings of the different upstream and downstream keys, I end up rarely using the select bus buttons. Well, I use them, but not that much. And on the field, I tend to rely on pre-recorded macros that automate all the layouts for me or companion. Also, the only transition buttons that I really use are the mix, dip, maybe the wipe here, but I don't think these other transition buttons are that important. The picture-in-picture -picture shortcut buttons are fixed and not customizable, uh, so I don't use this either. So regarding the select bus, this picture-in-picture -picture transitions there, um, I don't think these buttons were absolutely necessary. Um, on the opposite, we only have one toggle for the DSK1 and one toggle for the upstream key one. Uh, I would have preferred to have all the toggles for both downstream keyers and all the four upstream keyers since I use this on a regular basis. And finally, uh, to me, I think an iris button would have made more sense than a shutter button um, on the camera control here. Now, regarding the Adam software, a struggle that could be improved in software is adding custom destinations. Um, it's not practical uh, to have to edit that streaming.xml file since you have to take the XML file with you when you move from computer to computer. Uh, I would love to have better UI for this. Uh, also, when using Blackmagic Pocket cameras uh, with Atom Mini switchers, you are suddenly locked into a Blackmagic RAW recording mode, and I wish we could have the option to record ProRes 2, um, just like when the HDMI is not connected. Lastly, I think there is still quite a bit of a learning curve for new users, especially with this upstream and downstream key terminology. Sometimes the short name is USK1, sometimes it's K1, sometimes it's key one. So I think the UI in general has a potential for improvement to make it much easier to make layouts for users that don't come from a broadcast background. And this is mostly about software improvement. And I think John Barker from Here to Recall tackles this issue very well with his promising H2R macro layouts I talked about earlier. Um, what I hope to see is the simplicity of the what you see is what you get computers interface like PowerPoint, OBS, etc. pushed into the Atom so that you can get the upsides of both worlds into one reliable hardware capture card, switcher and encoder instead of a computer. With that being said, I do have a few suggestions to make to Blackmagic for future products. I think this form factor is perfect for fixed studios, churches, uh, but when you're on the go, uh, you quickly end up having to pull out loads of converters, cables, and monitors each time, uh, which means longer setup time. So I think it would be nice to see two variations of this Ada Mini Extreme, a 1U rack mount version, just like the good old Television Studio HD, but with all the features of the Ada Mini Extreme. And second, an all-in-one Atom Mini Extreme that would include two small monitors, one for the motor view and one for the program feed or whichever feed we want, uh, in addition to the two HDMI outputs. Just before I end this video, I would like to refer to a few channels that I like. Uh, if you want to learn more about Atom Minis, I already mentioned John's Here to Record channel, which has plenty of valuable content, as well as very cool software and utilities. There's also Brian from A to Z Productions, a pretty new channel, but with great insight and the macros are very good. Um, and you might already know Doug Johnson too. Uh, his videos are more about professional live production in general than just the Atom Mini series, but he has an incredible expertise and his videos have helped me understand loads of concepts 
so big thanks to him. Uh, Photo Joseph makes great content in the live production field as well. And if you're looking for Atom Mini Pro and Atom uh, Extreme tutorial, I definitely recommend uh, Alex Petit and Aaron Parecki's channels, uh, who both focus all of their content on these devices, which is great too. Of course, there are other channels uh, that I probably didn't see, but these are the six channels that I watch and learn from the most in this area. So that's a wrap. Uh, for me, this Atom Mini Extreme is not just a small Atom Mini Pro update with more input. It's a much, much more powerful machine. So if you are seriously considering live streaming, I definitely recommend it over a computer if you have the budget. If you already have an Atom Mini Pro and are happy with your four inputs, well, the question you have have to ask yourself is do you need to put videos side by side do you need a second usb output and a second hdmi output uh, well depending on your use case it can be important so it's really up to you and this is it for this walkthrough i hope you liked it i've tried to make it as extensive as possible and i've not been paid by blackmagic nor have i been sent this unit for free for this review um, as with all videos i would love to read your thoughts too on this atom mini extreme so let me know in the comments goodbye and see you soon <laughs>